What up everyone? Today let's talk about mortgage wraps, aka subject to wraps. A lot of people's talking about creative financing I see everywhere. They don't know much about it. Everybody's saying wholesaling's dying, so they're jumping over to subject to uh, creative financing because they think it's the new big rave that's gonna, you know, replace wholesaling. So what is a subject to? It's subject to an existing mortgage. So why does homeowners sell subject to? Well, first, subject to is you're buying a house from someone, you're gonna pay their payments, but you're gonna leave the mortgage in their name. It stays on their credit, it's in their name, but they're gonna deed you the house instantly. Like that happens when you guys agree to it, go to closing, they deed you the house, the mortgage still stays in their name and on their credit. And I know what you're thinking, well, why in the hell <laughs> would you sell your house and give up the deed and title, but yet you're gonna keep the mortgage in your name and hope that this investor like me will pay your payments on your behalf. Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, you could be in foreclosure or pre-foreclosure and behind on payments and you can't get out of debt, so you don't wanna lose the home in foreclosure, wreck your credit because you know foreclosure is not gonna make your credit look nice. You have someone like me that could come in and the deal don't work as a wholesale deal because you just say you owe too much and there's not enough equity. There's just not enough money there for it to be a wholesale deal. So I can come in and say you're five grand behind. I can give that five grand to bring the loan current, get you out of foreclosure, and then it don't ruin your credit any further other than those miss, them late payments or missed payments that you haven't made. I can get your loan current, the deed will go to me, but it'll stay on your mortgage. So you're still building credit. Your house will be paid for uh, on your mortgage. You'll get paid every month. Because what will happen is I'll find someone uh, that I can sell the house to and wrap it. So what that means is I'm buying it. I'm paying your, I'm going to pay your payments on uh, your behalf. But yet I'm going to sell it to someone who's going to put a down payment. It's called a wrap. Um, they're going to put a down payment with me. They're going to pay me payment. So those payments they pay me is going to be higher than what the mortgage payment is. Uh, and the principal interest, uh, taxes and insurance, their payment's going to be higher than that. So I'm going to cash flow off of it as well. But the biggest thing I tell people is when I talk to homeowners about subject to, because I've had a couple come across my table. I didn't keep them though. I wholesaled the subject to deal. We'll get into that in a minute. But what I tell the homeowners is, you know, even if whoever I put in this house for whatever reason can't make a payment, I'm still gonna make that payment regardless every month. It's gonna be like an auto pay. So if they don't pay me, then I'll just foreclose on that person and your payment's still gonna be paid even while I kick them out. And I'll put some, uh, we'll go through the whole screening process again and we'll find someone else to put in the home. I was like, and the goal is, what we tell everyone is, if the person we put in the home is hope, hopefully they can get bank financing within two to three years. So that way your mortgage can just get paid off completely in two to three years. That's what we screen for. Now that's not always true. Um, I mean, and that you have to be transparent on this, like, you know, you take the risk of, you know, it's staying on your credit for, you know, the length of the mortgage, whether you got 30 years or 20 or 10 or, whatever, it could stay on there the whole time. You're agreeing to that. We hope we don't do that to you, uh, but even if we do, it's not gonna affect you. Um, let's say the sellers are gonna go buy a new home. All we have to do is that we give them a form, a paper stating that we're paying the payments on their behalf and they can send it to their bank and see that those payments are being paid by someone else now and their debt to income ratio is gonna drop dramatically showing that that's off their um, their debt. So th there's a lot of benefits. Foreclosure is the biggest one to get people out, uh, to get them to do subject to. Another one is maybe they divorced. Uh, they, the house is, you know, the market's just not good. The house needs a lot of work and they can't put it on the market, but they can't sell it wholesale because they do have a mortgage, but you know, nobody, neither party can afford the mortgage payments on the house. Uh, they, neither one separately makes enough. So Subject to works for that. You can come in and get them to agree to do a subject to. You can both give them some money to move on if you want, even if they're not behind on payments. You can say, hey, well, here's what I can do. And, you know, we can give you 2500 each for moving costs at closing when you get to the closing table. And 
do it that way. Uh, what it, those other options? So say there's a um, they you move. Say you had your house listed for sale. You put in a, a offer on another house. You close on the house, but yours is still for sale because yes, this happens, and you're making double mortgage payments. Well, the way the market is, you, you know, when you put offers in, you can't just say, well, it's contingent to when my house sells. Too many people out there just buying cash and uh, no waiving inspection periods and appraisals. So, I mean, if you put an offer in on a house you want, you have to follow through with it if you want that house. It's just how the market is, you know, the last couple of years. So, let's say you're making double mortgage payments. Well, house hasn't sold, but you can't keep affording double mortgage payments. So, it's another option for you to step in with subject two. Uh, you get them, put them under contract, make the payments on their behalf, and it helps the sellers a lot. I, when I first heard of Subject 2 years ago, and it was from uh, Grant Kemp, he was a huge Subject 2 person out in Texas, I was like, man, that just sounds awesome. I've seen people uh, getting houses for, you know, some of them no money other than just paying the closing costs, and then they would either list the house on the MLS or sales um, if they needed fixed up some, and then sell it and make you know hundred thousand dollar check, and I'm like, dude, they got it under subject too. Then they put an MLS, and even after the house sold and mortgage, they still made a hundred grand. I was like, that's just nuts. That's that's way more than what you know <laughs> a wholesale deal typically does, unless you're doing commercial wholesaling like mobile home parks or apartment complexes. Um, so I looked into it, and like I said, I got I did a few, but at my, where I was, it was early in my wholesaling career a few years ago. I wasn't comfortable enough to keep them as subject to and wrap them. I just, what I did is I assigned the deals to cash buyer investors in the area that wanted them, that was familiar with subject to. Uh, I made money on it. I think first one was 13,000. I signed it to because it was, it was a good subject to deal. I got it with no money down and uh, I just didn't want the headache. I was nervous, I was new. And I was like, well, it's just kind of over my head. It worked. I did the stuff, the paperwork right, but it was just too much for me. Uh, plus, was in the process of getting ready to move to Tennessee because we was getting this house. So I assigned it to a cash buyer. He took it over, and uh, I let the seller know that as well. I just said he was a business partner. He's going to be handling all the payments. Uh, if you ever have any issues, just reach out to him. If you can't get hold of him, you can always reach out to me. And then the second one was uh, another subject to, uh, it was a $7,500 deal. And I did the same thing. I signed it to a different cash buyer that uh, was familiar with them. It was in his area of expertise. So it was a mobile home subject to that had a mortgage on it. But so that's the biggest thing with subject to creative financing is you can get a subject to home. That means you're taking ownership of the home. Yes, there's still a first lien position, but then you can wrap the mortgage, owner finances someone else, you become the second lien holder and uh, get passive income. And then if that person don't pay, you just boot them out, foreclose them and do the process all over again while you're still the owner of the home, uh, making the payments on the seller's behalf. So subject two is a big thing. I wanna make a video covering more in depth. Um, I don't, my suggestion if you're new, learn how to wholesale and then transition into subject two. Um, I feel like wholesaling is this, uh, of all the ways to get into real estate, it's the most simple way. You make the quickest amount of cash without spending any money, less headache. And then once you do that, you can transition into learning subject two so that way you're not wasting leads because every lead is not gonna be a wholesale deal. Here's the downfall of subject two because no one talks about the downfall. When COVID happened and you had all these people that didn't have to make their mortgage payments because um, the government just kept extending it so you couldn't foreclose or anyone, there was a lot of investors who had lots of subject to deals who had to make those mortgage payments for the people they couldn't foreclose on. So you had, let's just say you have oh, 10 subject to deals you have 10 uh, renters, uh, buyers that's not paying because they lost their job. They don't have to do it because they know they can't get foreclosed on. And that's what people was doing, intentionally not paying. Uh, you couldn't foreclose on them, but you still had to make those mortgage payments on the seller's behalf because you told them you would. So, I mean, let's just say the average payment was 800 bucks. You had 10 of them. I mean, that's 8,000 a month you're forking out. 
and not getting nothing in return from those 10 subject twos. So imagine that going on for four or five, six months before you could ever foreclose on them and get them out of the house. That's why it's suggested with subject two, you better have a decent reserve minimum from what I've experienced and seen is 20 to 25,000 minimum set back just for subject two deals in case you have an issue with your buyers and you have to make those payments. Or if the buyer, you foreclose and the buyer tears the home up and not only do you have to make payments, you have to repair the house. So, cause you have to be able to get someone back in it. So with subject to definitely uh, have 20, 25,000 minimum put back um, to be able to do, that's per deal. So I mean, if you got multiples, you need to have, you know, multiple of that. So I hope this uh, opens up your mind to other areas of financing cause creative financing is huge. You got lease options. You know, you got the subject to wraps, you have just traditional owner financing line contracts and whatnot. So, um, if you have any questions, leave them down. I'll answer them. I know on my, if you go to my Google, on my website, click on the free contracts. I have a subject to, uh, scripts and repairs and questionnaire in there that's free. So you can kind of get an idea and there's a subject to contract. So thanks for watching, like, follow, share, subscribe.